Good morning, church. Keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God and you will dwell in the land, feasting on his faithfulness. Find your delight and true pleasure in Yahweh and he will give you what you desire most. Give God the right to direct your life. And as you trust in him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. He will appear as your righteousness. As sure as the dawning of a new day, he will manifest as your justice, as sure and strong as the noonday sun. Quiet your heart in his presence and wait patiently for Yahweh. And don't think for a moment that the wicked in their prosperity are better off than you. Stay away from anger and revenge. Keep envy far from you, for it only leads into lies. For one day the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will inherit the land. So, Father, we just thank you so much for your promises. Your promises in your word, Lord. We just thank you so much that we can stand on these and believe and trust that you'll stand with us. Father, I ask that you bless your children this morning, that you bring your Holy Spirit into this room, and you stir up in every single body, in every single spirit. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Let's stand together and worship the King. Tries to roll in my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken Oh, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand the chance when I When I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand the chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide.
I feel love I feel safe I feel Jesus In this place I feel the one Within me I can't describe it But I believe I feel peace I feel light I see my stains turn A pure light I feel a burden I live from me As I raise my hands up And I sing I sing in glory
one king who reigns for all eternity Jesus King Jesus Jesus King Jesus King Jesus Jesus oh King Jesus Jesus You are the king and because of that, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry. We know that everything that comes against us, you've got in your hands. You're our victory. You're our foundation. You're the one who reigns over our land, over our region, and over our individual lives. And so today we give you all praise and glory and honor. And we simply say thank you. Because we know whatever we're facing, that we'll look back and see what you've done. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, King Jesus. And anew and afresh we give our lives to you. In your amazing name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Well, fall finally came, and it feels wonderful, and I cannot think of a place that I would rather be than right here with you. Thank you for those who have been praying for me. I'm living proof that prayer is powerful. I'm standing on my feet and praising the Lord today. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I just want to um, welcome everybody, but especially if you are new to Vineyard, please know that we are so just very honored to have you here worshiping with us. And our prayer is that you will experience God today in a way that just touches you right where you are. But not only that, but that we get to connect with you in such a way that we can show you what it looks like just to to be a part of the family of God and that we can begin becoming family with you. So welcome. I um, want to remind you of just a few things today. You know, we actually still have a church bulletin. It's not paper, but we still have one. So if you are not receiving those church bulletins through your email and would like to, feel free after the service to step by the information and welcome desk and give us your email address so that you can be added to the list. And every Sunday morning, you will receive your bulletin through email. But if that doesn't happen today, you can still, there are some QR codes through the building, and you can scan those and still get the bulletin so that you're keeping up with everything that's going on at Vineyard. One of those great things is focus groups. Now, focus groups are where the message you hear on Sunday becomes real. Because in focus groups, we meet together in small groups, we apply the message from Sunday, and that's also where you build a small community of people around you where in the low times, the high times, you've got somebody that has your back. So focus groups are so all important. If you are not a part of a focus group and would like to be, um, you can see in the bulletin, if you see it, that you can email Ash Hammock. You can go to the church website, actually, and get in touch with her. Or you can just call the church office. You can go to the website, get the church phone number, and call the church office and become a part of a focus group. She'll get you hooked up. The great thing is that we now have chat options available so that if you are not available to meet during those regular focus group times, you can actually become a part of a chat group and get the same benefits through the week when it fits your schedule. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Ash Hammock, for starting that. Have something going on this week that you ladies will want to know about. The Women's Ministry of Vineyard sponsors a monthly meeting called TNT. <laughs> Tuesday nights together. And um, we just meet, have a good time, have dinner together, and um, this is the week. So this Tuesday night, 5.30 at El Patrio in Flowood. Ladies, if you're available, come and just have some fun and get to know some ladies that will become your support. Winter weather has not showed up yet, but it's coming. And when it does, there are people who are 
homeless who are on the streets in Jackson who we want to support and we want to help. So um, we're having a winter clothing drive. The youth is sponsoring this. If you have some gently used winter clothing like coats, jackets, that kind of thing, or you would even want to go out and buy something new, um, please bring those. There's a table in the, the lobby that you can put those on to help those people um, and just share God's love with them. Now, this is one of those announcements that we tend to just kind of mm, skip over, but let me tell you what. This is probably the most important announcement of all. Sunday mornings from 8.30 to 9.30, we have what we call the power hour. That's a time when some of us come, and we come into the worship center, the band's warming up, that kind of thing, but we pray. We pray. We pray for the service. We pray for the church. We pray for you. It's the most important ministry that goes on here. So I want to invite you to just find a Sunday morning soon when you can come 8.30 to 9.30, even if you can't get here till 9, come and pray with us. And I promise you, we'll see the effects of those prayers. So come and join us. So in December, we will be having a, an official transition from the old senior pastors to the young senior pastors. <laughs> so we knew that most of you will be really interested in being here when Duke and Marie are preaching. So just want you to know that next month in November, they will be doing a lot of the preaching on Sundays. And in fact, next week, Duke and Bo are going to preach together. Don't know what that's going to look like, but I, I don't want to miss that. So be here next week for that. So it's time to take up our offering. No, we don't do that physically anymore, but there are a number of ways that you can, um, that you can give. And please know that this is not just about money. It's, a, it's about giving our hearts to the Lord. So there are, if you're here in the building... There is a kiosk in the lobby where you can give there. There's a drop box in the lobby where you can put cash or check. There's also um, a church website. You can go and give there. You can text the number on the screen and give your offering. Or you can even send an old-fashioned check to the church's P.O. box and give that way. Let's pray and bless our offering. So, Lord, we know that we would have absolutely nothing without you, that you're the giver of all things, and that everything we have came from you. And we just want to pause and say, thank you. We are blessed beyond measure. So now help us to have the heart of Jesus, to want to give back just a portion of what you've given us. So Lord, will you just open our hand generously and help us to give willingly and cheerfully, and will you take what we give, and will you multiply it, and do things that we could not even have imagined with it, so that we'll be able to have a story of what you've done. We love you, Lord. Amen. And now, I get to introduce, well, let me, you know, it seems like every Sunday we talk about favorite preachers, favorite preachers, because here at Vineyard, we don't have the same preacher every week. But let me tell you, this one is definitely in the running <laughs> with all of us. So I get to do, introduce soon-to-be senior pastor Rachel Burnham. Thank you, Carla. Is anybody better at announcements than Carla? I mean, I want to do whatever she says. Oh, wait, what? No. Mm-mm. Where y'all going? Mm-mm. It's the third Sunday. Oh, well, I'll be coming to get y'all. Hey, Josh, um, would you get the kingdom kids and bridge them? You already have them? Oh, you're, okay, my bad, okay, all right. I think I'll just sit down then. Okay. Behave yourself, son. Good morning. All right. The Lord told me this morning to get up, sit down, and wait for him. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's just waiting for him.
ma'am in the yellow shirt, God is all over you. It's Jessica. Oh, I see you now. God's all over you. He's been all over your week. God, I ask that you show her right now where you were this week. God, when she was rocking her babies and putting her kids to bed, where were you? Sir, on the very back row in the plaid, I don't know your name, but I see you every week, and I want to change that. I want to tell you that you have an extraordinary kindness in your eyes. That is the Father's eyes. You have your dad's eyes, the creator God. You have his eyes. And I thank you for showing up every week, and I thank you for looking at us with those so we can see a reflection of him. You are made in his image, and he loves you. Daisha, every family has been given a name by the Lord. I just read that this morning in Ephesians. Every every family under heaven has been given a name. God knows your family's name. He loves you. He loves your kids more than you do. He's pleased with you. And you don't have to do anything for that. I know we know it, right? Like we're all like, I know, I know, I know, right? But we, we need to know it. Beth Neath, you cannot hide. The Lord will not hide his face from you. And you can't hide from the plans and the purposes that he has for you. Not even if you tried. I know you don't want to. But God's calling you out. He's calling you out into the light to walk in the light. And when you walk in the light, the darkness runs. So just keep walking hand in hand with him. You'll be hidden in the light by him and by him alone. Okay, so last week... Bo um, preached with a big old log over his head. And uh, that's not likely to happen on this side of the, the, the duo. I'm not, I didn't say never, because every time I say never, God makes me do it. So, God, please don't make me hold a big log over my head. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes, uh, good and bad, I teach the kingdom kids in the back, so I miss the Sunday service. So I didn't actually see it live. Um, And all week long, I have been struggling with anxiety, like cannot sleep in the middle of the night, 1 to 5 a.m., I am up, and I am gripped with thoughts and and, and all these feelings. And um, this week, I usually, or I usually listen to the service on Monday before I go to work. And I just kept putting it off and kept doing other things. And, and, um, And finally, on Friday, after struggling all week long, by myself, I listened to his, um, to his message, and it was all about how when people ask us, are you okay, you know, are you doing all right, how's it going, and we're just, oh yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, you know, I, I, I got this. I felt like that all week. I was like, I can't reach out to people. I don't want to be a burden. I don't want, to, I don't want people to, to um, worry about me. Like, I'm, I, I am strong enough, I can do this. And then I hear his message and totally get rebuked. <laughs> so as soon as I sent that message out, though, it was like, a level of that anxiety lifted off of me because I knew that my sisters were praying for me. I knew that my family was lifting my name up and coming against the darkness and coming against that anxiety. And immediately I started to feel a peace. It wasn't all the way gone, right? But but I knew, I felt stronger in my spirit. I felt stronger in my ability to keep facing it and to to keep battling it. Because when this happens... I, I, I have been at a place before where I just let it overtake and I, I get in my head and I can't get out. But I've learned that there are some God-given instructions that help us to actually defeat anxiety. And one of those things is worship. And I've talked to a couple of people this week who've really been struggling with anxiety. It, you don't even have to raise your hand, but if you want to, that's fine. 
Has anybody been struggling with anxiety this week? More than normal, you would say? Yeah. It's really, it's, it's really prevalent right now. And I just want to speak to you like we have some tools. God has given us tools. And one of those things, I believe, is worship. When I get into worship, um, something changes. I was talking to um, Mary Jane, who she's a, a youth in here, and she said yesterday that she was all bound up. Like, some, like it felt like something was trying to like tie her down. And she just, in defiance of that thing, blasted some music and started to worship. And all of a sudden, she could, she could, it was gone. She could, it, that spirit, the demonic oppression, whatever, it was just gone and it was lifted up. And so I don't want to do this, but I'm about to mess up this microphone probably. Anybody that's in the back. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come do you know this song? Sing it. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will touch your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within to the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship because it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank you for indulging that. But y'all, that's um that's a tool we've got to start operating in this day and this time. We've got to start worshiping. We've got to remember that God sees past the 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 thing that we try to push up against. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you know how like sometimes in movies you'll see a cabin hidden in the woods? And there are Dozens and thousands and thousands of trees hidden in the woods, right? But I feel like sometimes that's what we feel like, is that we're isolated in this, in this forest of just overwhelming things, life, thoughts, processes, things we have to do, things we want to be, things we wish we had. But like God wants to get to the heart of all of that, the heart of worship, the heart of what is, our, what is our heart motive? What is the motive of our heart in these daily choices and these decisions that we're making? We t- we're talking about family. I asked um, the kids this morning in Power Hour. Carla, uh, Carla mentioned that. I asked the kids this morning, ask Jesus, what are you doing today? Lance, he saw Jesus playing the piano. So Duke, thank you. Jesus started it. He was sitting with you on that piano. Ethan said, He says, I see healing happening in his presence. And I said, Ethan, ask God, how do we engage with his presence? And he looked up at me and said, we engage with his presence by looking around for him. And I thought that was so funny because the Lord told me to get up here, sit down and look for him. We engage in his presence by looking for him because his presence is everywhere if we only have eyes to see. Cope said, that the Lord said, I'm building a firm foundation as a family in this church. What's significant about this is that kid's missed church more than anybody in here in the last month. (laughs) So he has no idea what we've been talking about in here. Kyle, he said, I see that we're breaking down the walls of the enemy. Let's cut down some trees, family. Caleb said, Jesus, I see Jesus standing with his sheep. He has a staff. And the sheep are still. They're not running around like crazy. That spoke to me, right? These children are hearing what God is saying just simply because they're asking questions. Let's not neglect to ask questions. All right, guys. Um, one of the things that I, I feel like God wants to do is build the family, right? We've been talking about that. 
foundation of the family. And what the Lord's been bringing me through a lot has been um, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. And it's all about love. What was from the beginning, so this is, I'm just going to start reading in 1 John 1. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, and the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with him, which was the Father, and manifested to us. And we have seen and heard and proclaimed to you also, so that we may have fellowship together. For surely we have fellowship with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. These things that we write to you, so that our joy may be made complete. I think another weapon in our arsenal that we do not use is joy. A couple weeks ago, on, on a Sunday, I was on my way here, and I started thinking about all the things that, um, that I have yet to do and want to do for the kingdom kids. I want to see these kids on fire for the Lord, right, at an early age. I want them to know things that I had to wait till I was 30 to know. And I started being overwhelmed with all the things that could go wrong. Does anybody ever do that? Like, you start thinking about all the things that could go wrong in, in what you plan to say. And then the thought occurred to me, I'm going to be joyful on purpose in spite of all of these things that are coming at me, in spite of all of the ways that, I am, um, I'm, I'm, that could go wrong, what if I was just joyful on purpose? We got to get better at that, guys, tapping into that joy. Like, we're people of the resurrection. I don't know if you know this, but like, Jesus died and he rose again. Death is defeated. He left it in the grave, and he now is forever sitting enthroned by the Father, making intercession and praying for you. We're people of the resurrection, eternal hope, right? Eternal life. We get a connection with the Father that, that we don't deserve. We didn't earn it. We didn't, we didn't do anything to get it. Jesus, he conquered all those things for us. So we're people of the resurrection. We should probably look like the most joyful people on earth. If, like, if we really believe it, and this is where that rubber meets the road, kind of what we were talking about a couple weeks ago, like no Christianese. Don't just say it because it's, you think it's the right thing to say. What, is, what are you actually believing? Because our life is going to reflect what we actually believe. So close your eyes for just a second. Holy Spirit, will you show each of us how we can engage with your joy this week? today, in this moment. Jesus, when was the last time we had joy? This message we have heard from him, and we announce it to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. I think for me, one thing that steals my joy is when I am um, in active unforgiveness with people. I'm not, I don't mean just like, you know, that person cut me off in traffic. <laughs> I mean like active unforgiveness. I am unwilling to extend forgiveness to somebody because of how they made me feel. So in that scenario, who is God? Right? It's me and it's them. Because now I have decided that the way that they hurt me and the choices that they made now govern my life. They govern how I think. They govern what I do. And so I have made that person an idol, and I've also made myself a judge. So I think one of the things that steals our joy is unforgiveness. And what's so fascinating about the way that God has worked is that Jesus was so blatant about it. Forgive. Forgive them. As much as you want to be forgiven, forgive them. He didn't say because they deserve it. He didn't say because they, 
um, they'll say they're sorry. They may never say they're sorry. The forgiveness part is to free us so that we can experience the fullness of joy, so that we can experience the fullness of his love and his acceptance. But I'm not trying to diminish the fact that we've all been hurt. We've all been hurt by people that should never have hurt us. Our parents, they were supposed to take care of us and protect us, right? They were, they, some parents, and I'll be one of them, um, has preached a good word and not walked out a good word. And that has made a lot of division in what I think about church and think about Christianity and people for a long time. I really just thought Christians just go to church, but they live like everybody else. That's not the way it has to be. That's not the way Jesus modeled it, and it's not what we have to settle for. We cannot agree with the things that we've settled for. You know, relationships and family and love and and joy and these weapons and everything, it's all good and fine, but we have got to take initiative to agree with what God says, right? So if God's saying, walk in the light, walk in the light as I am the light, What keeps you from walking in the light as he is the light? What has so easily entangled you? God, would you give us the weapons of your warfare to destroy those things that easily entangle us? So I'm going to keep reading. So we're walking in the light as he is in the light. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Everybody say all. One thing that has tried to trip me up this week is a repeat of my offenses in my mind. Anybody else lay down at night and start thinking of the bad things that you've done or the ways that you have fallen short? Anybody else? Yeah, right? But if we confess our sins... He is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we haven't sinned, we make him a liar and his word's not in us. So, I have sinned. But Jesus is righteous and he is holy and he is faithful. Everybody say faithful. Faithful to forgive us of our sins if we confess it. And, you know, one of the things about having a body and having a family and having the foundation of family in here is that in James it says, confess your sins to one another and you will be healed, forgiven, set free. So we have each other not just to come around and worship and sing praise, but we have each other to say, hey, I fell short this week. Now, what what do you have to say about that? Jesus says that any we forgive is forgiven. So when a person comes to you, like this week, I, I was sharing with Beth <laughs> that um, me and Bo got into it um, right before a family dinner. Can anybody say amen to that? Mm-hmm. Okay. We were going to a family dinner. Sorry, honey, I'm telling on us. Um, it was mostly me. Anyway, and there was a, de- uh, a decision that had to be made about the restaurant, and, you know, I picked without considering, or I changed the, I changed the plan without asking Bo about that, and, um, and he fired one off, and so then I fired one off, right? Um, anyway, Cope was sitting in the back like, are y'all gonna, are y'all gonna say you're sorry now? So I'm sitting with Beth yesterday, and I'm telling her about this, and, you know, the thing was, is that we were able to connect with that and be like, you know what, but that's not who you are. You made a mistake, you said the wrong thing, but God, that's not who you are, because you are a child of God, you can just make that right. And so Bo and I were able to restore that, which we already had, but it was just that It was just that release of being able to say, this is what's really going on. This is what's really going on in my life. I'm not perfect. I cannot be perfect. But this is what's going on now. Stir me up. Let's come together and stir each other up for what? For love and good works. It all comes back to love every single time. But we're not going to have that if we don't get real. It's got to be real or we don't want it. You know, David was really good at that. He wrote the Psalms. You know, I think uh, generationally, this is, this, this, there's uh, division in this thought, right? I think in the older generation, somebody correct me, we just didn't talk about problems. Is that right? I don't consider you an older generation or not. All right. Okay. But anyways, we just didn't talk about problems. If there were secrets in the family, that's where we kept them. Under the rug, hidden. We did not bring that stuff out to light. We did not air our dirty laundry in public. We did not speak about those things. 
And it seems like the generation now overshare. They all went to the back and they can't defend themselves. But, but they overshare, right? It seems like there's this division. But if you see that it's almost as in a rebellion of, I will not be silenced. This is real. This is something is going on in me that does not feel good. And it's not, there's, I don't know how to handle it. But they will not be silenced. And so we've got one generation saying, we don't talk about that. It just didn't happen. Just be quiet. And then we've got one generation saying, hey, I can't be silent. Something has to happen. We've got to learn to meet in the middle. Because every generation is important. We need every single one. We've got to have fathers and mothers. And that's where we're going now. Oh, thanks, Jesus, because I was really getting... Okay, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. I love that it says if instead of when, because to me that gave me hope that I don't actually have to keep living in a cycle of sin. Like, if Jesus says, follow me, then it must be possible for me to follow him, right? He's not setting us up for failure. All right, so when it says, if you sin, the advocate that's with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation or the payment for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the whole world. So by this we know that we've come to know him if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Gosh, I don't want to be that person, right? That says I know him, but my life doesn't look like it. Whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him, that the one who abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner that he walked. I'm not writing to you a new commandment, but an old commandment, which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment, the word which you have heard. I'm writing to you a new commandment, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away. Hallelujah. And the true light is already shining. The one who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness until now. Unforgiveness has no place in us. Unforgiveness has no place in us. Unforgiveness has no place in us. The one who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness until now. And the one who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Because he can see clear. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. God, we want to walk in your light. We want to walk in your light. We want to walk in your light because you are light and in you there is no darkness at all. So in you, if you are in us, there can be no darkness at all in us. Little children, because your sins have been forgiven you, for his name's sake, I am writing to you fathers. So he's writing to the children because their sins have been forgiven. He's writing to the fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. And I have written to you children because you know the father. We need the generations at work. We need the little kids to come in here and hear God and we need the, the, the older generations to come in here and tell us what they see. Tell us what they're hearing. We've got to have everyone from every, in the, every bit of it. Bo and I feel very strongly about that. The whole staff at Vineyard, the whole team at Vineyard feels very strongly that every single person is vital to this family. Don't walk out of here and, and think that you don't matter because of age or, um, or ethnicity or any other background. I don't want it if it doesn't look like heaven. Every color, every tribe, every tongue. United for one purpose, one spirit, one Christ. So what do we do with the realness of the hurts that we have? And the longings in our heart. And we wish we had those people that poured into us. We wish we had those fathers and those mothers. We wish that we had those sisters and those brothers 
we become them. If you didn't have one, if you didn't have a good experience with your family, you become what you wish you had. We're going to become them. The other day, my daughter um, was asking me, Mom, did you, when you were little, did you ever wish you had sisters? And I immediately fired back with no. Because when I was little, I had seen a lot of sister relationships, and sometimes they were traumatic, right? Seemed like there was always jealousy and strife and competition and ugliness. I didn't want any of that, and I didn't want anybody competing for daddy's little girl. And so I realized that after a while growing up, um, you know, five or six years old in kindergarten, first grade, and um, the most popular, most beautiful girl in the class came up to me, and she said, I'm having a birthday party, and you're not invited. And I went home, and I was like, cried and told my mom. I probably whined a lot like little kids do, but like, I felt that, right? Have you ever been the last kid picked on the playground? Or for any kind of game? Or have you been left out of an invitation? Or there's been something you weren't included in on. You weren't, you weren't in on something. Inside jokes with little cliques of friends that you didn't get because you weren't there because you weren't invited. I know I do this a lot. My kids hate it too, but y'all just close your eyes for a second. <laughs> God, when was a time where we felt left out? Jesus, what were you doing in that moment? He always shows up. His word says in Joshua, I will never leave you or forsake you. Later on it says that I have chosen you, I have redeemed you, I have written your name on my hands. He'll always show up if we're looking for him. So as I began to see women and to grow up and, and see how different relationships were, were, were functioning, I saw that there was a lot of backbiting with ladies. In high school, I was, um, you know, not included and not in on the popular, popular crowd, and even my own friends later betrayed me. Ever had that happen to you? Your close friends betray you? It kind of it warps your perception on, on relationships, and at some point I just settled with, I just can't be good friends with girls. Guys are just, they, they're a lot less drama. You know why? They don't talk. <laughs> There's no drama with guys because they don't talk and they don't care about drama and they're not going to talk about their feelings and they're definitely, if they want to go to the restaurant, they're going to tell you exactly which one they want to go to. There is none of this, you know, they don't care about your shirt or your shoes or any of those things. And so I just settled with, I just can't be friends with girls. I'll just, that's fine. We just can't do that. But see, that's a lesser truth because Scripture tells me brothers and sisters love one another. Brothers and sisters come together. Brothers and sisters carry each other's burdens. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. And so along the way, when I started to follow Christ, there were these women that stood out. Women that I would, I would come into contact with and do Bible study that there was no competition. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't sense it. I didn't feel like there was any of this well, I read my Bible more than you, or, I, you know, it wasn't any of that. There were just women, one of them in particular, her name's Priscilla. I, she, I never felt like there was anything but just honest love from her. And she made me, she, you know what she ended up doing? She made me better. She made me want to be like that. She, she showed me a version of Jesus that I hadn't seen in a woman, and I wanted to be like that. 
women at this church, Carrie, Summer, Beth, I mean, Anel, like all, Marie, all these women will pull you in and they will give you what they have freely. They'll stir you up. Carla, Aaron Beaver, like these women that have come along my life and they have, they have totally demolished the lie that I can't be friends with women or that women will always want something or there will always be competition or there will always be backbiting and gossip. There's just a handful of people that I can tell you, they strive to be like Jesus, and they're not going to allow that stuff to permeate the relationship and pollute the land. There are people out there that want to be your friend and champion you and, rem- and remind you of the call of God on your life so that you can go forward because it's not about one person getting better. I remember Leif Hetland was talking about, um, he, uh, he was talking about how every time of somebody in the body of Christ did well, it was like the family stock portfolio just went up. So what if we acted like that? What if every time somebody had an incredible word from God and a prophetic word, and instead of the first thing being like, well, I wish they'd have called me out on stage, would it, it would be like, oh my gosh, look at my brother. Look at what he just did. Look at what just happened to him. I've heard that so much because that is on God's heart. This, this week on Monday, I woke up from a dream and I saw this puzzle, and it was like the outside of a puzzle. I'm not a puzzle person, just to be honest with y'all, time out. So story time. Back at Christmas in um, Corona Christmas or Quarantine Christmas 2020, I was like, let's get a big puzzle, a thousand-piece puzzle, and put it together. I should have started with 20 pieces. Um, Because, Bo, we left that thing on our kitchen table for like, how long, baby? Three weeks? Three weeks? Okay, we got the perimeter. Who knows that there's a plan with a puzzle? You got to get the perimeter, right? You got to get the perimeter and the outline before you can start putting the pieces together. And so we, we, we got that part done, and then we have a little patch here and a patch here and a patch in the middle, and then, we, and then I eventually got, was like, I really want to eat on the kitchen table, so I chunked all of that into a bag and wrapped it up. It's still in my closet. We'll never do it, but it's fine. All right, so... Monday morning, I woke up with this, this dream, and in the dream, I saw the outline of a puzzle all made up and little patches here and there and here and there. And the Lord said, it's time to connect the body. It's time to connect the church because connected, you will cover the land. We cannot afford for unforgiveness and anxiety and all of these things that try to trap us and keep us in our own, in our own little bubble we cannot let that trap us in our own little square on this puzzle piece. You know, Bo always talks about that, and I live with him, so I hear it more than all of y'all. So he has that little, that little phrase that he uses. It's like, you got to know your piece of the puzzle, because if you know where your piece of the puzzle fits in with everybody else's piece of the puzzle, then we have a full picture. And that used to get on my nerves. But just because it's like, it's, it's so simple, right? Like, we know that, right? Just figure out who you are. Just figure out who you are already so that you can link arms and join together. Y'all, the time is now. And if you don't know who you are, guess what? I do. I see you. Shelly, I see you. You are seen and known and you're valuable. And your presence changes things. And we got to have you, sister we got to have you operating it. I bless you, Shelly, to do exactly what God has created you to do. I bless your spirit to receive everything that he has for you. He makes all things new. Why am I reading, John? I don't even know, guys, but the Lord told me to, so we're doing it. All right, here we go. Little children, I have written to you because you. No, I know where I'm at. I've just got sidetracked. Thank you, honey. I know it's 14. Thank you. I have written to you, fathers, because you, you know him who has been from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you're strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. You are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Don't tell me the right answer. Tell me what's true. 
Do not love the world or the things in the world, because if anyone loves the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Ouch. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. It's not from the Father, but it's from the world. The world is passing away in all of its lust, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. <sighs> I'm skipping to 28 because it's going to talk about the Antichrist, which is important, but that just means anything, any spirit that says that Jesus did not come in the flesh. Because why? Because we're people of the resurrection and we hold to what we believe. We hold to the truth that God came in the flesh as Jesus Christ, paid the full price for our sins, died, and rose again. All right, so now little children abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who, also, um, who is from him practices righteousness. What are you practicing? What are some practices in your life that are shaping you and guarding you and leading you into a closer relationship with Jesus? How do you fight anxiety? How do you, how do you fight unforgiveness? How do you agree with Jesus in the midst of all of that? Pastor Bruce told me not to talk too long, so I'm not going to. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that he would call us children of God, and such we are. For this reason, the world does not know him, or does not know us, because it did not know him. So, beloved, now we are the children of God. And it has not quite appeared what we will become. But we know that when he appears, we will be like him. Because we will see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. One of the things um, that I personally do, and this is just a practical thing, you can take it or leave it, but I know that I have been raised up in a world with a, a system that does not match what God has laid out for his kingdom. And I don't want to just, Carla and I were talking about this earlier, I don't want to just walk in, I, just, I don't want to keep walking in a blind spot. You know, I don't want to walk in darkness and think it's, and call it light. And so sometimes I will sit with my journal and I will, ask God a question, and I will say, God, what is a lie that I'm believing right now? And he is faithful to answer that one, so let's try it. Y'all close your eyes. God, what's a lie I'm believing right now? And what do you say is true? It's those simple exchanges that change us and stir us on. It's those simple ways of listening to what God is saying letting him speak truth over it, and choosing in that moment not to agree with the lie anymore. When he reveals it, especially when I am uh, really in, in a place of feeling like I'm just not enough, right? I can't get it all done. I have this to-do list. I have these expectations. I have all these things. When I'm feeling like I'm not enough, one day I was in my car, and I was like, God, what lie am I believing right now? And he said, that it all depends on you. Man, and he was right, because I was acting as if it all depended on me. And so, whatever you're really believing, whatever is really, what you're really believing and experiencing on the inside is going to play out in your life. So if I'm believing that everything depends on me, then I am trapped and bound and never and going to be running in circles. I'll look like a hamster on a wheel, Right? But if I take myself off and I say, okay, I'm getting off of this crazy cycle. I'm getting off of this wheel. And Jesus, I'm not going to agree with that anymore. I'm actually going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to believe that it does not depend on me. So I break that lie over my, over my heart and my life in the name of Jesus. So God, what do you say is true? 
And immediately I saw a picture of him holding me in his hands. And it's so simple, right? Y'all know that song? Go ahead, Beth. Come on. Don't say no to me. Get up. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. I bless the call of a worshiper worshiper on your life. You're a magnifier. I bless that. Zach, you are one too. I've seen you dance in Africa. So. <laughs> We're going to end with this, but um, ministry team, I um, actually don't want any music today if that's okay. Is that all right? Um, if you're dealing with something, if you're dealing with a hurt and unforgiveness, confess your sins to one another and you will be forgiven. So we're going to be that for each other. There's no condemnation in, for those who are in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. So this is not like I want you to tell your deepest, darkest secrets. Now, if you want to do that, if the Lord's telling you to, that's, that's definitely, you know, we I'm not one of those people that's going to shy away from the truth. Because when things are brought to the light, there is healing. Things that stay hidden are like infections that spread. And the body is not going to go septic if we continue to bring those things to our life. Um, uh, There's a pastor down the street, Chip Henderson. And I love one time he said, you know what? If you tell on yourself, the devil doesn't have anything else to say. Because when, when you have done something or felt something or, and you know it doesn't line up with what God says, right? We all know when that feels yuck. But the thought comes is you can't tell them that. If you tell them that, they will never love you again. They'll never look at you the same. You can't tell them that. So be the one that tells on yourself. You take charge of that, right? You get to decide. So, but today, because I, um, I felt like the Lord led me to Ephesians 3.20 earlier today. So I read it and I thought, oh, that's cool. But there was something else that struck my mind in that, in that whole thing. It, it was this right here. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think. I can think some pretty big things, right? You got some imagina- imaginations in here? Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So um, if you are a father in this house, Jim, Bruce, Dave, where's John Murray? And his coat. That's fine. That's fine. Um, Daniel and Trisha. There you are, sir. I want, you, I want you fathers and mothers, Margaret and Jim, I want you to just find you a corner, find you a place, find you a... a so Margaret and Jim, I'm going to do this better. I'm sorry, Duke. I know you like order. I'm super sorry. All right, so Margaret and Jim, could you go get in that corner? Bruce? Hold on. Do you want to go? Okay. All right, so Bruce, Kathy, and Dave, will y'all go to that corner back there? Carla and Rich, will y'all come up here? And Daniel and Trisha, will y'all come up here? Y'all, these are some mothers and fathers. I don't know which kind you had growing up, but that's not how you have to be anymore. You know, my dad didn't really have, his biological father was not really part of his life, um, so he had a stepdad. But my dad broke a generational thing off of our family. Like, he was an actual father. Don't settle with just better than your own dad. The goal is Christ. The goal is God the Father, right? So if you've had a wound from a parent, or if you have a deep place of just wanting to belong in the family, and you want that father and mother's blessing Let them come and love on you today. Duke, I changed my mind. Can you come play the keys? Let them love on you today. If you have um, 
some issues with brothers and sisters and being in a real community of, of friends. Um, Summer, Beth, Renata, could y'all come line up right here? If you want to really start building some relationships and connecting your piece of the puzzle to the rest of the piece of the puzzle so we can have the big puzzle piece or the big puzzle finished, come up here and stand with these women. Let them pray for you. They're solid. If you have healing in your body that you need, we pray for that because Jesus said, lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. So Bo and Brian, will y'all come up here and pray? Oh, and Zach. I'm, I'm activating you, Zach. Thank you. If you have any of those needs, we're going to just, we're just going to let God and his spirit have his way. Don't let pride keep you from coming. Go find one of these people. Let them talk to you. Let them pray over you. Let them love on you. Don't let pride keep you in your seat. It kept me from reaching out for a whole week and I couldn't sleep. Everybody can stand and come as the Lord leads you. God, we just welcome you. We welcome your spirit, Jesus. We want to say, Lord, we want to walk in the light as you're in the light. And God, we want to belong into your family. So Jesus, we just welcome you to stir in us however you want us to move. In Jesus' name. who are receiving prayer, please be mindful and you are dismissed. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us, that you guide us, that you watch over us, that you comfort us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you reveal to us our true nature of who we are through your Son, Jesus. praise. We receive your blessing. We receive your adoration. And we thank you for your faithfulness. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. If you have children, please pick them up back in Kingdom Kids. And thank you. Have a blessed and wonderful day. In Jesus' name.
what you did before. Come and do once more. Want to be a part of your story. God of our mothers and fathers, show your glory to our sons and daughters. What you were back then, come and be again. We want to see your power in our presence. In our time, in our day, come and move in this place. Come and move, God. Move, God. Move, God, in this place.
come now and move among us. What you did before, come and do once more. We want to be a part of your story. God of our mothers and fathers, show your glory to your sons and daughters. What you were back then, come and be again. We want to see your power in your presence. 